All right, first equation in our system is the line negative two times x minus nine times y is equal to negative 25. And the second equation is negative four times x minus nine times y, and here we have a negative 23. So let's say that we want to solve this system of equations. So you decide to add these guys together, put a little plus sign and add them. Now it looks like you're going to actually be lucky here and these are going to add and go to zero, but actually that's not the case because negative nine plus another negative nine is not zero. That actually works out to negative 18, right? And of course this does not add to zero. That's not going to happen. So if you try to add these straight away, you will get a new equation that is valid, but it won't help you because what you'll have is you'll have, this will be added to this negative six X. This will be added to this negative 18 Y. And then you'll add the other side and you'll have a number. And so you will have a new equation that'll ha still have X's and Y's and you can't do anything with it. What do we do? Okay, what you have to do is change one of the equations in order to make it cancel one of these terms. And that's why I say there's like a little step you have to do in the beginning here. If it doesn't already set up, if it's not already provided to you so that something will cancel, then you have to do something that is legal within the rules of algebra to change one of them so that when you add them together, one of those terms will drop away. Now, you can add things to both sides of an equation. You could subtract. You can also multiply on both sides of an equation by anything you want. And you can also divide both sides of an equation by anything you want. That's legal. We know that multiplying or dividing both sides keep the equation balanced. So what would happen if we just took this equation, this top one or the bottom, it doesn't matter, but the top one, what would happen if we actually multiplied this equation by negative one? Well, if we multiply by negative one, it means we multiply the left side by negative one. And to keep it balanced, we also multiply the right side by negative one. What will happen is we're going to flip the sign of this guy. And then it'll be positive nine y here and positive two x. And this will be positive 25. And it looks different, but we can multiply by negative one on both sides because we know we can multiply both sides by anything we want. But by doing that, we get a positive nine y, which we can then add to here and kill it and make it go to zero. So the actual first step is not to add these things at all. It's to take the left side and multiply by negative one. And then what you're gonna do is multiply it times the left hand stuff. But if you're gonna multiply the left by negative one, you have to multiply the right by negative one. Otherwise, what you have is not legal. All right, so what happens when we multiply by negative one? Don't forget, you have to distribute. It has to be everything multiplied by negative one. So this becomes a positive two X, and this times this negative becomes a positive nine Y, and this on the right side of the equal sign becomes a positive 25. Now this equation looks different than this one, but actually it represents the same thing. Because when you take both sides, yes, you did change all of the signs on the left-hand side. You made them all negative. But you also at the same time made this the right side negative two. So the equality that you had there is preserved because it's just like a scale. If you multiply by something on one side, as long as you do it to the other side, then it looks different, but it actually represents the same thing. These two things are the same thing, really, even though they look different. So then I'll just write this other equation down below and I won't change it because I don't need to. I have a nice cancellation here. And now I can add these blue equations together. So I basically changed the top equation into something new. And now that when I add these together, of course, it all works out now. So 2x plus this, uh, negative 4x is going to give you negative 2x. When we add this together, we'll get a 0, 0y. Zero and then over here, when you add this, you'll get a positive 2. So you have negative 2x is equal to 2. How do I solve this equation? Well, I'll just divide by negative 2. And what I will get is cancellation on the twos. You'll get X is equal to negative one like this, negative one. Now the rest of the solution proceeds as usual. I can take this X is equal to negative one. I can put it into anything I want. I can put it into here. I can put it into here, or I can put it into this version, which is slightly different or this one. I'm going to get all the same exact thing, no matter what I do. So I'm going to take and stick it into this bottom one, just because it's the closest one. There's no real reason to no real preference, it's all gonna be the same. So what we will have is negative four times X, but I know that X is now negative one, minus nine times Y here, and then it's equal to negative 23. This becomes positive four, minus nine Y, negative 23. 
All right. How do I get rid of, how do I solve this equation here? Well, what I'm going to do is I'll just, since this is plus four, I will actually, I think I'm going to rewrite this guy. It would be four minus nine y negative 23. So what I'll do, since this is positive four, I'll get rid of it by subtracting four, subtracting four. So the negative nine y will be what is left. Four minus four is zero. And then negative 23 minus four is negative 27. And then to get y by itself, I'll divide by negative nine like this. And what I will get over here is my final answer because the negative nines will cancel. I will just have y. This divided by this is positive three. So y is equal to positive three. So at the end of the day, an x value of negative one and a y value of positive three is the solution. This is a solution, negative one comma three. So this procedure, it follows exactly what we did before. We're still adding the equations. Everything is the same. The only thing is, because you know that you can multiply an equation by anything you want, we're gonna choose, as long as you do it to both sides, we're gonna choose, because we have a nine here in both cases, we're gonna choose to multiply this by negative one. Because by doing that, I flip the sign of this so that when I add it, I will get the same thing. Now, let me go back and say, I don't have to multiply this by negative one. If I wanted to, I can instead choose to multiply this one by negative one. That will flip the sign of this, and I'll add them together, and if you go through it, you're gonna get exactly the same answer. As long as you're doing legal things, you will always get to the same answer. So don't stress out about which one to work with. Both will yield the correct answer. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. Five times x minus two times y is equal to 23, followed by five times x plus eight times y is equal to negative 17. All right, so what am I gonna do right here? If I add these straight away, five plus five is 10 x, and then this will give me 6y, and nothing's going to cancel. The variables won't cancel. So I have choices here, but the easiest thing to do is to recognize I have two 5s here, two 5x's. So I can either multiply the top equation by negative 1, or I can choose to multiply the bottom equation by negative 1, and both of these guys will give me exactly the same answer. Now in the previous example, I took the first equation and multiplied it by negative 1 to flip this guy. I could do that here, but just to make it different, let me work with the second equation right here. Let me just take that second equation and show you it doesn't matter which one you do. I'm gonna multiply negative one, five x, eight times y, and then you have to multiply the other side as well because you can multiply both sides as long as you do it you know, to the same thing, uh, to the both sides. So what do I have? Negative one times the five x is negative five x, and then I have negative one times this is negative eight times y. And then I have over here positive 17. So this is the new equation, which is different than different looking than this one, but actually represents the same thing. So what I'm gonna do is, since I have this equation written from here, I'm gonna grab this equation from the top and bring it down and just write it underneath. 5x minus 2y is 23. And I'm gonna add these equations together. So what I did is I took the bottom equation, I multiplied by negative one, here's what I got. And then once, that was the second equation, then I take the top one and write it down underneath and I add negative five x plus five x is zero. Negative eight y plus a negative two y is negative 10 times y. And then 17 and 23 is gonna be 40. And so I have negative 10 times y is 40. How do I solve this equation? I'm gonna divide by negative 10. The tens will cancel, the negatives will cancel. I'll have y is equal to, this is negative four. Y is equal to, let me just double check myself, negative four. That's correct. Then I can take this negative four and I can put it anywhere I want really. I can, the, I can put it into either one of these equations or I can put it into either one of these. I will get the same answer. So let's just put it into this one just to, just to do something different. We'll put it into the top equation right there, but I could put it into this one, that would be fine. So I have negative five times x minus eight here times y, which is negative four, is equal to 17. So negative five times x, uh, this becomes positive 32, is equal to 17. So I'm gonna have negative five times x plus 32 is equal to 17. Now to get the number over here, I'm gonna subtract 32, subtract 32. So this goes to zero, 
Here I'm going to have negative 5 times x, and on the right-hand side right here, I'll have negative 15. Now, how do I solve for x? I'll divide by negative 5. And when the 5's cancel here, I will have a value of x of, what is this, positive 3. Positive 3. So, putting it all together, of x value of positive 3 and a y value, which I already solved for, of negative 4, this is my point. 3, comma, negative 4. This is the solution. This is the intersection point of both of these lines. Okay. Let's take a look at problem number 3. So, so far, we've had two problems, both of which have intersected, and we have uh, two lines uh, that, that uh, are intersecting in one point. We're going to do one more of a similar form, and the last problem that we have, I'm going to give you a punchline ahead of time. It'll be parallel lines, and we're going to see what happens when there's no solution at all. All right, problem number three. Let's take a look. It's 3x minus 7y equals negative 2, and 6x plus 2y negative 20. Now, if we just add these straight away, we're going to get 9x. And then this plus this will be negative 5y, and then we'll add these, but nothing will cancel. No variables will cancel. But this is a little different. We can't just multiply one of these by negative 1, because if we do that, we still won't get any cancellations. So is there any other number we can multiply? Because we can, we can manipulate these equations just like fractions, right, to change them. We'll change one of these guys. What do you want to do? Let's, instead of just trying to multiply by a negative 1, Let's take this top equation and figure out what we can multiply it by. Let's write down 3x minus 7y is equal to negative 2. What can I multiply this equation by so that when I add it to the 6, it's going to, to kill uh, the term here? I have to multiply by negative 2. And if I do it to the left, I have to multiply by negative 2 on the right. So when I multiply this out, I'm going to get negative 6 times x. And then this times this is positive 2 times 7, 14. Why? And then this right here is positive 4. So this equation, even though it looks totally different, really is the same thing as this one, because we multiplied by a common number to both sides. Now let me take this equation and write it down underneath. It's positive 6x plus 2y is negative 20, and then you can see that you can add these guys together because now they will cancel. So when I add them together, I get 0 here, and then when I add these, I get 16 times y, and when I add these, 4 plus a negative 20, I get negative 16. So I will have 16 times y is negative 16. And then when I divide by 16 to get rid of it, y is negative 1. The answer is negative 1 for y. Now I can take this thing and I can put it into either one of these equations or either one of the original equations. It's going to give you the exact same thing. Let's put it in here and see what we get. So here we have 6 times x plus 2 times y, but we know that y is negative 1, is equal to negative 20. 6x minus 2 from here is negative 20. Now, we have 6x minus 2, negative 20. We want to solve this equation. Equation, so we're going to add 2, add 2. And, of course, we get 0 here, so we just get 6x. And on the right-hand side, what do we get? Negative 18. So how do we solve this one? We divide by 6, divide by 6. And when we get cancel here, we get a value of x is negative 3. Negative 3. So when we put it together, we say the x value of negative 3 and the y value of negative 1. This is the solution. Negative 3, comma, negative 1. So up till now, all of these problems have had a single intersection point. And we learned before that if two lines are parallel and they never cross, they don't have an intersection point, and so there's no solution. It's really easy to see when you graph it, but let's see what happens when we try to solve a system like that. All right, here's our last problem. 2 times x plus 3 times y equals 8. Then we have negative 4 times x minus 6 times y equals 10. So we have no idea what this thing looks like, but we know that we have some choices. See, if I multiply this by 2, then I'll have 4x and I will be able to cancel with this when I add it. Okay? If I multiply this by 2, we know that that's going to happen, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. So if I take and multiply uh, positive, I, say, I should say positive 2, times 2x plus 3y, 
And then if I do it to the left, I have to do it to the right. I just multiplied both sides by two. So what I get when I do that, multiplying here, I get four X. Multiplying here, I get six X. And then over here, I get 16. So I've multiplied the first equation. Let's now take that second equation and put it in here. Negative four times X minus sign six times, uh, whoops, I made a mistake. This should be not an X because two times three is six. This should be a Y. And then this one is negative six Y. And then this 10 comes down here. So let's add both of these equations together. So when you have four X plus a negative four X, you get actually zero X's. And six plus a negative six, you'll get also zero Y's. And when you add these together, you will get 10 plus 16, 26. So what you have here is zero X plus zero Y, but this is really nothing. This is zero is equal to 26. Now, can it ever be true that zero, the number, is equal to 26? No, it's never true, never true. So in the course of doing all of these legal things, we know we can multiply this by two, we know we can add them together, but when we do it, we get a nonsense answer. You see, sometimes you read in the history of science, people say, well, you know, they predicted this or that particle, or they predicted this law of, you know, antimatter or whatever. Or you might say, this is impossible. They predicted the law predicts this won't happen. This is the kind of way in which math can predict things. You see, the, the answer that you get is nonsense. It cannot be true. So these equations are weird in some weird way that makes them not true. What it means is there is no point where they are both true at the same time because when you add them together, you get something that's nonsense. So what you get is no solution. And what this means is these are parallel lines. I'll put a little parallel there. So if you were to graph the first line and you were to graph the second line, you would figure out that they have the same slope. I encourage you to do that. Go ahead and plot both of those and you will find out that both of these lines are actually parallel. Put them into mx plus b form and they'll be parallel and that is why they have no solution. And the way this falls out in this solution technique is that you'll get an answer that means that basically can never be true. And that's what I wanted to point out for our last problem. So in this lesson, we've learned how to solve systems of equations by elimination, by addition. And we've conquered the cases of when we have a solution, when we don't have a solution, and so on. What I'd like you to do now is practice all of these, and then follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to solve word problems that involve systems of equations. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.